ready for something to happen. That's so nice. It's good to have you this morning. And I, as I was looking at the weather, they were said it could rain this morning, and it didn't. And you're here. This is wonderful. So this is good. Um, we're moving through this Lenten season, uh, moving into kind of halfway through at this point. And so it's good to gather as we have these little mini celebrations before Easter on the way to the cross. And so this morning we begin with our call to worship. So I invite you to stand as you're able. And this is a responsive call to worship. So, If you ask the sky who God is, the sky will tell you of God's reach. If you ask the day who God is, the sun will tell you of God's warmth. If you ask the night who God is, the moon will tell you of God's comfort. The heavens are telling the glory of God, from Psalm 19, verse 1. Are you listening? We are listening. We will sing for God's glory. Then let us worship the holy God. Let us sing together a gathering song. Gather us in. Have you ever wondered if his voice faltered when he answered? 
Did he respond loudly with confidence or with a tentative whisper? We'll never know. The test doesn't tell us about those details, but we can trust no matter how we speak to God, when we speak, God is listening. So friends, join me in the prayer of confession. Whether you whisper these words or speak them with conviction, may you trust that our gracious and merciful God is listening with love. Let us pray together. Holy God, some days we are quick to declare your goodness. Like Peter, we see you in our midst and are confident in our faith. Other days we are distracted and uncertain, desperate for answers. Forgive us for losing sight of you. Some days we are quick to trust your blessings, trusting that we are called, that we can make a difference. Other days our praise falls silent and doubt creeps in. Forgive us for losing sight of ourselves. We know that fear and doubt are part of the journey of faith. But for those days when we are far from you and far from ourselves, we ask for your tender grace. Pull us closer for you. Remind us of the mountaintop moments of our faith. Amen. Friends, whether you speak to God in a whisper or with clear conviction, with questions or with answers, with hope in your heart or with doubt in your heart, God will always listen with love and mercy. So rest in this good news. Regardless of how loudly you live your faith, you belong to God. You are loved. You are claimed. You are forgiven. Speak that good news with confidence. Amen. Let us sing together our song of praise, and that is, Great is the Lord.
As we prepare for the reading of the lessons, we have what is called the prayer of illumination, so I just invite you to be in a time of prayer to prepare our hearts for the lessons. Holy Word, for generations people have bowed their heads, have prayed the Psalms, have asked for your presence in their lives. For generations people have whispered, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable and pleasing to you, O God. For generations, we have gathered here. We have quieted our minds. We have prayed to feel your presence in our midst. So once again, just as generations before, we turn our hearts to your word. Still our busy minds, that we may truly comprehend what you have to say to us today. With joy and hope we pray. Amen. The reading of lessons. The reading today is from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts its knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of the chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens, and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold, much more than fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, the honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, Keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. <clears throat> then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. My strength and my Redeemer. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us welcome the gospel with these words this morning. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised. We will trust your word. We will trust your word. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We begin at verse 13. <clears throat> now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked his disciples, 
who do people say that the Son of Man is? And the disciples replied, well, some say John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and well, still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus then turned to them and said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare for our word for today, let us send our hearts and minds with all the word of our friend we have, Jesus. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Israel, the Holy Land, I enjoyed being in places that were very natural. 
around the Sea of Galilee, up here at Caesarea Philippi, down by uh, at the bottom of the Red Sea and all that. Because everything was the same. It looked like I could picture Jesus walking in those places. Once you get to the city, I just lost it. I just, you couldn't see it anymore. But there's Caesarea Philippi, a nice, quiet place where everything begins for the life of the people of Israel because that's their water source. And so it's a very special place. And if you put the map up there, you'll see where Caesarea Philippi is. It's about as far north as you could get in Israel without going into Lebanon. Which, these days, unfortunately, I have to say, is I don't think it's as peaceful as it could be. But with Mount Hermon right there, um, it, you're kind of getting caught up in there. And so, I remember coming down from there, and I could see one of the major roads that went up to Lebanon. And I thought about that road, and I thought about how treacherous that might be. But there's a little nook right there at the base of Mount Hermon that was just a quiet and peaceful. It's quite an ordinary place there, and uh, if you go to the next picture there, um, it's also a very religious place because of the beginning of the waters there. At Caesarea Philippi, there were at least one, two, three, four, five different temples that were built there by the Romans and the Greeks and other people. First of all, you can see in the artist rendering there, Herod the Great built a temple there right at the mouth of the huge spring to honor Augustus Caesar. There's a courtyard to the worship of the god Pan. There's a temple dedicated to Zeus, one of the gods. There's an upper temple, tomb temple of the dancing goats. And a lower temple, tomb temple of the dancing goats. How many of you would like to see dancing goats? I would love it, but anyway. So there's all these temples set up there because this is a holy place. As I went back and I read more about this place, you see that, again, the grotto there, that little tunnel that's down in there? Remember that picture there? Is that people would actually throw their babies in there to appease the god Pan. And it was also as if that was the, the depths of hell right there. That's what this place was all about. Worship, but also fear. It's very interesting. And what's interesting is that Jesus would take his disciples there. They'd already been sighted and then they're on their way back, but Jesus says, we're gonna, I don't think he said we're going to Caesarea Philippi. He just said they followed him. Because the disciples wanted to be anywhere else except for there because of everything that was going on. The depths of hell are right there. These temples are there. Nothing really to do with their religion and their God. They just didn't want to be there. But Jesus didn't ask them. They just went. When Jesus tells the disciples, I'm going to go to Jerusalem, what do they say? No, you can't go to Jerusalem. They're going to kill you. <laughs> Jesus didn't offer that option here. No. We're in Caesarea Philippi. And so we follow Peter. We follow Peter, that wandering heart all over the place. If you look at that, you can see the ups and downs. We all know about the ups and downs of life, don't we? Some days we get it right, right? And other days it's just, oh, man, did I blow it. Ups and downs. And Peter had them, didn't he? I mean, just look at the stories we've had in the season of one. Last week, Peter was getting it all right until what? He stepped out of the boat. Right? Today, Peter gets it all right. This is great. But what does he do next week? Well, you'll have to come and find out because it's another downer. But today we have a positive story. What's interesting is the theme for today is praise the mount. And when I saw that theme, I thought immediately of transfiguration. When Peter, James, and John are with Jesus up on top of the mountain, and Jesus is transfigured. Because that's what I thought praise the mount was. And I said, oh, wait a minute now. I think there's more to this. The theme song that we kind of drive all these things from, the sanctified art is working with, is come now font of every blessing. And you missed it last week, and you missed Judy and Jim singing that. Um, and we sang it at the beginning of the season or two. And there's a verse in there that is not in our hymn book, but it's the traditional verse that goes way back. And it talks about praise the mount. Now, some people, when you think of praise the mount, you think of, well, we're praising the mount that is right there, Mount Hermon. 
No, that's not that. Some people would say that we're praising uh, Peter because, after all, you know, he's the, the head of the church now, and, and so we're praising that. No, that's not it either. The mount comes in in the next verse of the song. It says, the mount of thy redeeming love. God's unchanging love. That's the mount that we praise. That's the mount that we praise. And so picture for a minute that this is where the disciples are. That this is where Jesus is. And they don't want to be there. And Jesus, in the midst of these temples of other gods, starts to ask the questions, who do people say that I am? Well, let's see. We go through the three people and kind of do that, and then they say, well, okay, that's fine. Not one of them said it's those gods that are there. They didn't even want to acknowledge that. But then Jesus turns to Peter, and it's Peter's time to answer. Who do you say that I am? You're the son of the living God. Don't miss <laughs> any one of those words there. I think it's kind of funny because when Jesus first asked the question, he kind of gives them a little hint. He says, who do people say the Son of Man is? It's kind of like a little clue there. And you can say, well, you're the Son of Man, right? You just said it, so you are. But you're the Son of the living God. Don't miss that word living there, okay? Because each and every one of them are looking at those five temples there of, you might say, dead gods or gods that really aren't living. And Peter makes a distinction. No, you are the son of the living God, not like those gods. And then Jesus says something, and you have to know about Sister and Lord, He says, even though the gates of Hades, he has those words there. Go back and read the thing. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And these disciples are looking at what some people think are the gates of Hades right there. That cave. Imagine that. How powerful that is. And Jesus uses the surroundings and says, no. Even though some people believe that that's the gates of hell, but that is not it. And it doesn't matter where it is because th that will not prevail. Because it's your faith that will keep you going. It's Jesus, Peter's encounter with the mount, which is God's love. And so today we praise the mount. Our picture, and if you look at the picture for the week there, it's who do you say that I am? We spend a lot of time on Wednesday talking about this. I just invite you to Bible study because we can spend more time doing it. But it's just so wonderful because you see the light of God's love right down the middle of there. The light of God's love changes things. There's so much in this picture, I'm not going to go through it all, but just very simply is that the light of God changes things. It changes things from what we think we are and who we are to what we truly are. It changes things and that adds color to that. If you see all around there, it's almost like black and white there. But through the love of God, through the light of God, through the eyes of God, is that we're changed and all of a sudden we see things completely differently. And we see all those colors. We see the brilliance of light. But the most important part of this picture, I think, is that Peter and Jesus really <laughs> see each other. A smile on Peter's face. It's like, oh, he's thinking, I want, to, I want to build a tent here. I want to stay right here. And Jesus looks at him and almost has a smile on his face too. They see each other. Everyone else has just disappeared. You can hear the water of the river in the background. It's really peaceful and quiet. And Peter <laughs> and Jesus start to really see isn't that a moment that you would say is a mountaintop experience? It's the mount of God. It's the love of God. How powerful that is at this moment. Think about the time when you were closest to God. Think about that. And how God's love just enveloped you. Peter and Jesus really see each other. As I was reading some of the information from Sanctified Art, they actually... Someone kind of quoted someone else. It's kind of interesting. I must have been sitting in a group there talking about the scriptures and everything. And uh, the one pastor who writes the poems and everything, Reverend Sirisby, just, just kind of spoke up. 
And someone else wrote this down. And this is what she said. She said, many of us are hesitant to talk about our faith. She says, but I think conviction matters. Do you believe in forgiveness? Do you believe that love has the power to change lives? Do you think that the world is in need of grace? If so, I want to know about it. Tell me what you believe. Ambiguity can lead to apathy. So tell me what you truly believe. They have a ripple effect. In Bible study on Wednesday, I told each and every one of them, you need to have an answer prepared. If someone says to you, who is Jesus? You need to have an answer to that question. Because if you say, oh, I need to think about that, no. Oh, uh, you should go talk to my pastor. No. You need to have an answer for that. So that if they say, just like Peter, whatever it is you come up with, that would be wonderful. But have an answer there. Just like Sarah Speets is very is, is, is I want to know about it. They're asking you because they want to know about it. And don't be hesitant. Just say this. Jesus is my name and Savior. Whatever it is you can come up with. I read the Bible and this is what the Bible says to me. This is who Jesus is to me. Is have an answer for that. Because that's what Peter does. Talk about God's love. Talk about how God's love has pulled you through things. Talk about the ups and downs of life that God has been with you. Tell them your story and you have to know what your story is and tell them what you believe from your heart. I know that us Northern Europeans, that's the last thing that we want to talk about. But it's the first thing that someone else wants to know about. So practice and know it. Have an answer to the question. Reverend Sarah Speed also wrote a poem for this week. I want to share it with you. It's called Praise the Mount. I've stayed quiet before. I've held my tongue when passing mountains. I've slipped my hands deep into my pockets despite the music that invites me to dance. I've glimpsed a new moon and a new love and have acted as if it was something other than a complete God-given miracle. But not today. Not today. Today, I will dance. Today, I will tap my toes all the way to heaven's gates. Today I will point out every shade of gold and purple that I pass. Today I will talk about my faith as we talk about the weather, early and unprompted, comfortable and unashamed. Today I will tell you that God did such a good job with freckles and willow trees and your entire being. And today I will not be embarrassed by my own conviction. I will not swallow my praise. I have stayed quiet before, but not today. Today, I will sing. Who do you say God is? God's the mount. God's the love that keeps us going from day to day. It is God's love that helps us to say that God is good. All, All the time. time. All the time. God is good. Let us sing together um, our sermon hymn for today. And again, this is a, a familiar tune, but it focuses on, on uh, here at the peak as we talk about the story here. And so let us sing together here at the peak. <laughs>
of this world. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us continue our prayers with our prayer song. The Lord, listen to your children. <laughs>
God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. You alone are God. We thank you for the gift of Sabbath rest. Awaken the church to the mystery of your presence and give us glad hearts as we receive the good news of your deliverance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You renew creation. Drive out those who would make the earth a marketplace. Protect rainforests, mountaintops, oceans, and wilderness areas from commercial exploitation. Unite nations, policymakers, and businesses in efforts to reduce carbon emissions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You judge the nations. We pray for an end to war and strife in every land. Strengthen international efforts to negotiate peace and provide humanitarian aid to people fleeing from conflict. Hear us, O God. You bring healing and hope. We give thanks for physicians, nurses, researchers, therapists, and public health workers who prevent and treat illness. We pray for any who are sick. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You abide with your people. Sustain any in this community undergoing life transitions, marriage, divorce, childbirth, adoption, moving, graduation, employment change, or death in a family. We pray for those preparing for baptism. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You bring life from death. We remember our loved ones who've died, confident that they have new life in you. May we trust that nothing can separate us from your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. And Lord God, we do thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence. We thank that you are here right now with us. And so we turn to you with prayer. And today, Lord, help us to focus in on these names that we hear. Help us to see their faces as your face saw Peter at that time. Help us to see each other and to pray for each other. So today we lift up for that. Frida, Marion, Harriet, Don, Anne, Connie, Grace, Carl, Barbara, John and Jan, Sharon, Lois, Carol, Marsha, Doris, Janet, and Daryl, Dennis, Ginny, and Pat, and Janet, and those that come into our minds and we see their face in front of us right now. Lord 
God, we also lift up and pray for Sandy Hopper, who's going to have surgery on Wednesday. We pray that she'll be with her and with the hospital team that will be with her, the doctors and nurses and others. Lord God, we ask you to be a presence in all these people's lives, that you'll bring them peace and hope and comfort, that you'll surround them with caring people, and we pray for those caring people around them, their family members and caregivers. Lord God, continue to walk with them in these days so that they may know that we all praise the mount of your love and that your love surrounds us. May they feel that presence today and evermore. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of all of our hearts as we ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to stand as you're able and also as comfortable as you are to share God's peace. And as John brings the offering forward, let us sing together our offering song, We Are an Offering. And I'm sorry, and so that is the
Do our answers require anything of us, keeping Jesus at arm's length so we don't need to commit? Or can we say that Jesus is the only, not only the Son of the living God, but the living God itself? Will we say this out loud? Will we change our lives because of it? In our knowing and unknowing, let us offer our prayers to the God who is. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our grace. Holy mystery, we repeat the words of the prophets and psalmists that your ways are not our ways. They're all too wonderful for us to understand. We cannot dream of this creation, a pillar of fire that guides us in our wanderings, or the many ways you keep your promises to bring us home. God, of more than our words can explain, we praise you for who you are. Jesus, the living God among us, how can we limit what we understand? Even when we're bound by human body, time, and space, you were still the great I am. And you still are, I am, our hope, our judge, our salvation, the way, the truth, and the life. You continue to show us who you are, and for that we give you thanks. Spirit of glory, you whisper awe and truth into our hearts. You provide us wisdom and understanding. You are counsel and light. You are the spirit of adoption of the family of God. You are the love that calls us beloved. Holy Spirit, there is no limit to what we don't understand. But for you, we do believe, and we get to believe. And we come to this table to know you anew. We ask that you surround us with your presence, making our ordinary juice and wine and bread into an experience of communion with our triune God. Continue to teach us who you are and who we are in you. As we prepare to approach this table, may we do so with curious hearts. Remind us that it was when Jesus sat at table with strangers and friends. It was in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup that they came to see him and know him more fully. As you prepare to approach this table, help us to hear Jesus' words once again. Who do you say that I am? May we answer with confidence, even as we embrace the mystery of you and the promise of your faith. And help us to remember that who you are is tied up in the night in which you were betrayed. When you took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to the disciples and say, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this with remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave the frog to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also with remembrance of me. And so help us to remember. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. <coughs> Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We give you thanks and ask for your blessing of the Holy Spirit on this bread that we break. May it be the body of Christ. We give you thanks and ask for your blessing on the spirit of the cup that we share. May it be for us the cup of salvation that is a new covenant in Christ's name. In this we pray. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer that our taught us sing from our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Reminded that all are welcome to the Lord's people. Please follow the directions in coming forward. Again, coming down to center, I will return to your seats by the side. Come, for these are the gifts of life. As we celebrate the mount of love. Praise God. And we want to thank uh, Philip and Giselle for a special music.
protecting you and keeping you with grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer after communion. Jesus, our inability to fully describe who you are places no limits on you. We thank you for the ways you have already made no limits. We seek your wisdom to understand what you have as you have been present with us at the table today, may we become more fully aware of your holy presence elsewhere in our lives. Amen. Receive the blessing. Beloved wonder, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within you saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. You are called, you are blessed in both your ups and downs. You always belong to God. Go in peace, go trusting that good news. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And Jim, it's time for the announcements. You know, this is the high point of being an assistant minister. I don't know if you knew that or not, but it is. <laughs> well, no pressure, huh? Good morning again. Good morning. Just want to say welcome to everyone, and especially to any visitors that may be with us. If there are visitors in your row, do say hello to them. Do have your name tag on so that they can see your name. It's easy for us to know each other, but it's kind of hard when people are coming in, so do that for them. We hope you were blessed by worship today, and please join us for refreshments and conversation in the fireside room now following worship. Today's Sunday morning Bible study is on Psalm 19, and will be held in the boardroom after worship. Pick up your refreshments and come to the boardroom. Choir rehearsal is at 10 o'clock, on Wednesday mornings. Singers and all lovers of music are invited to join. Midweek Bible study takes place on Wednesday mornings at 11 o'clock. We're continuing with the Wandering Heart series. We'll study the Gospel of next Sunday and during Lent. We're studying a beautiful art and wonderful poetry for the Wandering Heart Lenten theme. This Wednesday at 5 o'clock, please join us for soup suppers for Lent. Please sign up to bring soup and bread at the meal. That, that sign up is in the lobby. You're also invited to join us for midweek Lenten study, focusing on Stations of the Cross. The Lenten study begins at 6.16. Whenever people finish their soup, in other words. Be sure to pick up the booklet for the series, which is on the uh, lid table in the lobby. The evening study concludes with prayers and communion. Remember to spread, uh, to spring forward next Saturday night before you go to sleep. It's time to set our clocks forward. Most of mine do it automatically, but my alarm clock doesn't. <laughs> so. That's the one I especially need to do. Don't be that guy that comes in, you know, as we're all singing the sending song and you come in for church. That <laughs> happens on uh, Daylight Saving. Never here, though, right? Never. <laughs> uh, I want to uh, share, give a special thanks to all 18 of you, 18, who responded to my in in invitation last Sunday to help serve the hot meal that evening. Uh, that hot meal was for people who are hungry in our community. And we chose to do it on Sunday, on the weekend, because there are no hot meals served anywhere in the community on weekends, only the five days, five weekdays. So you 18 who volunteered that day were in addition to the original nine people who had planned the meal and shot for it and prepped for it at home and baked and cooked and brought it to church and warmed it, there, there were 18 plus 12. It's, it's amazing, 18 plus 9, sorry. 
Those, those people who came arranged tables and they arranged chairs, they did tablecloths, they set out the salads and the main dishes and the side dishes and the desserts and the beverages. It was, it was truly magnificent. It smelled wonderful. It was welcoming. And I wrote much more about it in the newsletter, which I know is about to land in your inbox. So please read that. It's not the last one. I want to, we want to thank Kathy Evinger and Rosemary Peterson for donating the altar flowers this morning. And everyone is invited to check the flower chart in the lobby and choose a Sunday around an important date for you. Dan is not here today, but I wanted to say for him that we are definitely collecting the shoes, pairs of shoes, for children who are served by the Lutheran Mission in San Bernardino. Um, it was a little bit confusing, so I'm going to try one more time today. Each kid has two cutouts of shoes, thanks to Lori. Each shoe represents one pair and two pairs of socks. And so since each kid has that, that makes two pairs of shoes and four pairs of socks, if you choose to do both for the kid. There are there one only, just in case you only want to do one. But we just found it a little bit less crazy to go ahead and take two for the same child. So, so this one got two pair, one pair and two socks, and another pair of shoes and two socks. So those are good. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right. Thank you for supporting the little tradition. And I was going to say thank you, Jim, for your leadership of the meal, too. So let's give it to Jim. <laughs> and then there's the one that stands behind you all the time to push you to do all those things, and that's Jim. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, just a couple other announcements. Um, next Sunday is Ketchup Sunday. I looked all, I knew that I had this from before. I looked all over for this tonight. To find it, I finally found the ketchup bottle. There it is. So, um, help us um, to, to, to kind of catch up. We're not too far away, but kind of catch up so that we move into Easter springtime and can do some wonderful ministry. So, uh, I, there'll be a letter going out this week. Yeah. Uh, and, and you'll get all the information. But help us out to catch up there. Now, the next one is um, oh, yes, the rescue tour. Dave Anderson and Roger are going to be here. It's going to be a wonderful concert. Um, if I know a lot of you say, well, I don't like to drive at night. So if that's the case, please talk to people around you. Um, you probably can find someone. How many of you live in Sun Lakes? Come on, raise your hands. I'm volunteering each and every one of you. Is look at those people around you. There are people that, that can get, get around with someone, a carpool. Um, gosh, you could come to concert and then go for pie afterwards or something. I'm not sure. And, you know, if someone drives you, say, let me go get you dessert or something. Build it in there. Build it some fun. So anyway, so that's coming up on March 15th. Um, and so please do that. And is that, I think that was it. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Uh, again, thanks for being here in worship. Just a wonderful time. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sandy is here. She said she was here for Christmas Eve at the 11 o'clock service. She goes, do you remember? I said, wait a minute. Sandy. She goes, oh, you're so good to remember. I said, no, I thought we don't need another Sandy around here. <laughs> That's why it's stuck. But anyway, Sandy, good to be with you with Boos and Sue and everyone. They're so good to have you with us this morning. I just invite you to stand as we sing our Sunday song, and that is Blessed Assurance.
proclaim your faith. Thanks be to God.